Ah, good morning, Marcus Conti reporting on this uh, Sunday, February 24th, 2019. I'm going to talk about some top uh, top stories today. So uh, Bernie Sanders is top story. So I, I, I realize I want to, I'll, I'll give you a, a, uh, a story that, uh, that inspired me once. It was by, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Neil Young. Neil Young said, he said, Neil, why did you, why did you leave Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young? Why did you leave? Right? And he said that the music wasn't there anymore. Right? He, he felt that, that with this group of people, he, he had exhausted himself in terms of the music. And he, he said, I have to follow the music. Right? So what does that have to do with what's going on right now? Why bring it up? Because I feel like um, just, you know, surveying the comments down below, it seems that a lot of people that are uh, tried and true uh, on the Trump train. I, I've never been on the Trump train. I, I, I am a, you know, I was open to the idea uh, for a number of years, you know, for the last two years. Give the man a chance. Let him prove himself. And um, and I quote, this is from uh, Jimmy Dore. Trump is a billionaire con man that doesn't give a fuck about you. That's Jimmy Dore saying that, right? Uh, now, is it true? Is there truth to it? Yeah, there's truth to it, right? And am I am I is my opinion that harsh? Um, it, it's getting there. It's getting there. I mean, you know, there's there's been a million. So what I'm trying to say is that if you don't have to say goodbye, you know, I understand. If I have to follow the truth, right? that's what that's what this is about. I can't be. There's other stations. There's other channels. You could go listen to H. A. Goodman. He'll continue to tell you Trump is wonderful. Or, or YouTube Satan, he'll tell you how the economy's doing fantastic. Or, and that's fine, you know. Or Lionel Nation will spin it, you know, and tell you that, uh, you know, give you a soft, a soft, you know, follow cue, f- trust the plan, right? So you could do all that stuff. But for me, I have to follow the truth. You know, that's, that's, and the truth is in the policy, right? And that truth is now, uh, revealing itself in in Bernie Sanders, in the Venezuelan coup, in the Yellow Vest uh, France movement, and you don't have to agree with me. I don't care. <laughs> you don't have to say goodbye. You, none of that stuff. So let's jump. Um, let's just jump right into some stuff. I want to. Uh, I want to play. Some, just listen for a while. I want to ask you about socialism. There's a, a, a an email that went out. I, I think in the last few days from the Trump campaign, which of course is already <laughs> up and running. Uh, it's it's a fundraising email. It says Bernie Sanders announced he will be running for president in 2020 with a very simple platform: full blown socialism, not partial socialism, full blown socialism. You you've <laughs> called yourself you've called yourself a socialist for years. It's been a question, interestingly, I think on the it's campaign really trail. Other candidates have said they're not socialists; they're capitalists. But there's this debate that has ensued about what does that mean? A lot of conservatives have pointed to Venezuela and said food shortages, increasing authoritarianism is what uh, socialism means and it's what Bernie Sanders wants. What is your definition of socialism? What's your model for it? I think that when we look at a modern democratic civilized society, you're looking at economic rights in addition to political freedoms. So right now we have a constitution, you have freedom of speech, freedom of religion, et cetera. I happen to believe that in the year 2019, with all of the wealth around us, we can create an economy which guarantees health care to all people as a human right. Just a preface, right? So so this is all, th- this interview, by the way, is very interesting because it, it, Chris uh, Chris Hayes and the MSNBC crew never gave Trump, uh, never gave Bernie Sanders the ability to speak. They would cut him off in mid sentence, right? And here's this is this is a, a significant tell in that you, you see they're actually they're letting him speak, which is wow. They're actually letting Bernie Sanders finish his sentence without cutting him off or lying about him, right? So that's one thing. The other thing is that Trump has take took a shot, right? Trump has taken a shot, and that's all they got. Socialist, full blown socialist, commie slash socialist, right? That's it. Just try to smear him with a with a vint- vintage term, right? And uh, right, so that's all they got, right? So we got to get those out of the way. If that's if that's all there is, then I guess that's all we got, right? 
which guarantees education from child care right. to higher education as a human right. The policy. Which guarantees Earn. the right of people to have decent and affordable housing, which makes sure that you're living in a community where the water that you are drinking and the air that you are breathing but, is look, clean. Let me so ask you economic this, rights as human rights. That's rights. what I mean. And by the way, Chris, but how not is that, a radical idea. This. Right. That's my question. Right. So that, what you're describing is the mixed economy. And we you know, there's a national health service in the UK. There are um, right. the United States right. public of course, housing. Of course. Right? We have we have public yes. provisions of those goods. Is there something that's over right. and above that distinguishes your vision from a kind of welfare state mixed economy? Well, I should also add that was a smear. So the welfare, he called it a welfare state. That's not what that's not. <laughs> they stick words in your mouth. You got to catch them. That in 1944, this is exactly what Franklin Delano Roosevelt talked about. Right. He talked about jobs the and health care and education as a human right to be guaranteed by the government. And what I'm talking about exists in many countries all over the world. You know, you go to countries in Scandinavia, college education is free. Every other major country on earth guarantees health care to all people as a right. Most countries have higher minimum wages than we do. So essentially what we are talking about is making sure that a vibrant democracy makes sure and guarantees that all of our people can have a decent standard of living and that we do not have this grotesque level of income and wealth inequality where three people end up owning more wealth than the bottom half of the country, where a handful of billionaires can spend hundreds of millions of dollars to buy elections. That's what the political revolution is about. That's what democratic socialism means to me. So there you go. He defined it for you, right? So the other, the, look at the look on, on Chris Hayes' face. It's like, oh, fucking what? Right? They're going to get, they don't know what they're about to get hit with. That's the, they, they're starting to realize what they're about to get hit with, the tsunami, the tsunami of, of, of voices that are, um, that uh, uh, support this candidate, right? That's what they're about to get hit with. And it's going to be big, right? It's already big. You're already seeing it. You want to see, I'll show you some of the memes, some of the, um, some of the, let's keep listening. So, so let me return to the Venezuela case because it has this been is, so used by. All right, so this is really good. Here's where Bernie Sanders, now the smears have been um, uh, abundant, right? There's been, I'll, I'll show you the smears after, after I play the recording, but, um, the you, this this is Bernie Sanders defining his position on Venezuela on national TV. Now it's been spun out of control that he's a Venezuelan supporter. He 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 supports the the regime change. Listen, by conservatives in the in the U.S. Uh, on ex exactly this, you've been critical of the Maduro uh, regime. Uh, I think also critical of some of the steps taken by the Trump administration, sort of ratcheting up pressure. But what is the Bernie Sanders theory of the case? for why Venezuela is the way it is. What went wrong there in what was a, a, an avowedly socialist project? Oh, uh, well, I mean, that's, that's a long... See, they're trying, to, they're trying to stick because you see how they talked about define socialism and what your brand of socialism is, and then let's flip to Venezuela and try to stick Venezuela on, uh, on Bernie, right? So it's, it's subtle, but this is still mainstream media... You know, it's still mainstream media, but the difference is they're actually giving Bernie the chance to speak, which is very different. Story that we can't, I don't think we have the time to get into, but this is what I do, will say, and that is that I think there must be free and fair elections in Venezuela. The last elections were not free. Yeah, but Bernie, the, the biggest, one of the biggest obstacles in your crowd is that we don't have free and fair elections and you allowed it to happen, right? That is a big obstacle, that one, Russia, and you calling Trump a racist. Those are the three that you have not uh, come close to uh, overcoming, and people, people haven't forgotten it yet. You keep calling Trump a racist. Most, half the country, more than half the country doesn't get it. They don't know what you're talking about. Even, even like people that have been a subject to racism in minority you know, groups say, what the hell is he talking about? What racism, right? So that's your party doing it. It's not... It's not, uh, it's not some other camp doing it, right? And uh, Russia, Russia, Russia. I mean, I think the, the numbers, I don't know what the stat is, but probably 70% of the country doesn't believe Russia had anything to do with it. They had, they believed that it was the mainstream media and, and the, um, you know, deep state that uh, helped to rig the election. Second of all, we have got to do everything that we can 
to provide humanitarian aid along with other countries so that people do not starve. To Let's, let, let me just back that up because he talks about the three, he makes three points about Venezuela. Let's listen. This is the Bernie Sanders theory of the case for why Venezuela is the way it is. What went listen wrong there in what was a, a, an avowedly socialist project? Oh, uh, well, I mean, that's, that's a long story that we can't, I don't think we have the time to get into. But this is what I do, will say. And that is that I think there must be free and fair elections in Venezuela. Wow. The last elections were not free. Second of all, we have got to do everything that we can to provide humanitarian aid along with other countries so that people do not starve to death. Uh, and thirdly, uh, we need to make certain that the United States does not do what it has done time and time again in our history, and that is get involved in overthrowing governments in Latin America. We did that in Chile, we did that in Brazil, Guatemala, other countries. We should not be doing that now. The future of Venezuela must rest with the Venezuelan people, not the Trump administration. So did everybody hear that? Let's there must be free and fair elections let's, let's in you. Venezuela. The last elections were not free. Second of all, we have got to do everything that we can to provide humanitarian aid along with other... Right, so he's a humanitarian. He wants humanitarian aid. Free and fair elections, humanitarian aid, regardless of what. He doesn't... He's not specific. Even if, the, even if it's um, a tyrannic regime that they're trying to say Maduro is, he still is a humanitarian. So it's like Jimmy Carter, really. ...countries so the people do not starve to death... Uh, and right, he's starving them out, right? He's talking about people getting starved out, but he doesn't talk about the U.S. sanctions, right? It's a mistake, but this is the big one. Thirdly, uh, we need to make certain that the United States does not do what it has done time and time again in our history, and that is get involved in overthrowing governments in Latin America. We did that in Chile. We did that in Brazil, Guatemala, other countries. We should not be doing that now. The future of Venezuela must rest with the Venezuelan people, not the Trump administration. So what are the politician uh, in the field right now has said that, that uh, the exception of Tulsi Gabbard, who has said it, but none of the Democrats, Trump is the, the polar opposite, right? Regime change, right? He, he said it, okay? So now we can, we can move on. Uh, Bernie Sanders, as someone who has campaigned hard for Hillary Clinton from one end of, his of this country to the other, it is an outrage that she had to run against not only Donald Trump, but also the Russian government. Now, this is, I just threw this in there because it's a big obstacle, Bernie. If you Bernie bros are watching, bro, you got to get Bernie to stop saying this shit because that's a turnoff, right? Because the people that are paying attention, which is, you know, 60, 70% of the country believes and, you know, based on the evidence that Russia had nothing to do with it. So that's a big obstacle. I like this one. <laughs> Feel the burn. <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> please, please, hungry, please help. It's a funny, funny meme. <laughs> dude, don't call me dude. Uh, here's, here's another one. The people of Venezuela are enduring a serious humanitarian crisis. True, to, to some degree. The U.S. is sanctioning the shit out of their country and it's starving them out. It's a humanitarian crisis. The Maduro government must put the needs of its people first. Well, they don't really have a choice in that. They, they would like to, and they keep saying, you know, stop sanctioning us, get the hell out of our country, hands off, hands off uh, Venezuela. They're not allowed to. Allow the humanitarian aid into the country. Well, there's a price tag to that because if they do, then they, there's a humanitarian crisis, right? And then the U.S. will use that. Then of all of a sudden you'll see Pompeo at the U.N. See, he'll, he'll be at the table and the U.N. banging on the table. So see, there's a humanitarian crisis. We have to go in and regime change right? and refrain from violence against protesters. Well, is that really a bad thing? Is that is anything that he's saying here a bad thing? No. Um, so so that's so that's that, right? So those are some of the memes. I know that I know that uh, people weren't happy with uh, with Bernie's stands on Venezuela, but there yeah, we just clarified. So let's let's look at Maduro. They've been talking about this one too. Gotta get your salsa. Man. So this is down in Venezuela, right? It's so fucking crazy shit. Wow, it's all pro Maduro. Oh, I thought it was pro Guardo. I thought it was uh, 
I thought it was overthrow the government time. Right? So let's check this out. These are the videos we're seeing. The headline is Maduro breaks relations with fascist government of Colombia. Maduro! Does this make you a commie? A commie? Does it make you a socialist? No. It's a spirited people. No podemos seguir soportando que se preste el territorio de Colombia para una agresión contra Venezuela. Por eso he decidido romper. Trump is a big faggot American, big square head white American. Fuck him. Viva Venezuela. Fuck Trump. Right, so, so they're, they're a spirited bunch, man, right? I'm a, oh, I'm a commie, right? I'm going to get a fucking shirt, man. That's my new shirt, man. Commie. Right? I'm a commie. Because, because I support uh, free and fair elections, and I, I support people's right to, to choose. Look, so much so I was down there yesterday, right? Here's in the U.S., right? Where's the, where's the Guardo? Where's Guardo regime? This is all from Maduro. I saw it with my own eyes. Right? That's me, evidence. I was there. I saw it in New York. Right? Pro-Venezuela. Pro-support for Maduro. Hands off Venezuela. Uh, so, evidence. So, that's Venezuela. That's Bernie Sanders on Venezuela. And and the Yellow Vest, why is it consistent? Why is the Yellow Vest movement consistent? Because it's consistent with ousting oligarchy to deflate the billionaires, break up the banks, a living wage. Uh, it's just it's just common sense. It's not it's not it's not the 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 classic sense of a socialist nation. It's a sense of Break up the monopolies, right? People that they want, they want this idea of a pure capitalist society where people, you know, it's the, again, I'll, the analogy, right? It's the banker, they're sitting at the table. You've got the banker, you've got the, the worker, and you've got the immigrant, right? And the banker, and there's, and there's 20 donuts on the table, right? And the banker takes 19 donuts for himself, and then he turns to the worker and says, you better grab that last donut before the, before the immigrant gets it. Right? That's the state of it. If you, if you like that, then this isn't your channel. <laughs> right? if, you're, if you're okay with that, right? If you're okay with fighting the immigrant for, for the last donut, you know, then you don't have to say goodbye, man. So here's Venezuela. Cops are getting an ass kicking. I'll just say about this: when you see um, when you see uh, gas, you know, bomb like they're throwing smoke bombs. That's a that's a chemical attack on your own people. Right? That's you know, it's using it's using excessive violence and chemical warfare on on pedestrians. That's what it is. Evidence. For just gathering. That's what this is all about. Just for gathering. Let's see. I got a bunch of them here. Some other clips. So it's still going on is my point, right? It's, uh... Wow, it must have been a nice day in, pa in Paris. Look at this. People got t-shirts on. It's going to get bigger as the weather breaks. They're going to come out in numbers, man. They're not fucking around. Ah, hot French chicks. Mmm, yummy. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> hot French chicks. Hot French chicks. Oh. She said, John. What else? Oh, we got some other, here's some more smoke bombs. I think this is by uh, the Eiffel Tower. You see the Eiffel Tower in the background. Very iconic. 
Chemical warfare. That's what we're talking about, chemical warfare. With gunshots in the background. Cannon shots. Peaceful people singing. Police pushing them back. For what? What'd they do? Wow, that's a great image right there. Wow, fucking awesome image. Ooh. Ah, there's the Eiffel Tower. Revolution, right? It's consistent. Political revolution in America. People fighting to keep out the oligarchy in Venezuela. That's, that's the shot right there, man. Love that shot. Look at that, man. Viva. Viva Paris. Well, who would have ever known, right? Eiffel Tower. <laughs> going to take it and knock it down, man. <laughs> okay. So there you go, Venezuela, Venezuela, viva Venezuela, it's France, France. French, French are not giving in, week 15. So. Ba -boom, ba -bang, pow. so Marcus Conti reporting on this stuff. So, you know, you see the common thread, right? Am I, um, am I sewing, am I sewing things that shouldn't connect? Well, I don't know. I think so. I don't think so, man. So. You know, uh, also about the the comments down below. You can see a lot of trolls. This is this is uh, normal. I don't trust any of the numbers, the subscription numbers, or anything. I should just, it's about the truth, right? And and if people want to come on here and say, socialist, socialist, fifty times, right, and say I'm going to quit, I'm going to quit your station if you say if you downplay Trump and say say Bernie socialist commie should be the president. Right? Well, then, <laughs> there you go, man. Who would who's who has the energy to keep saying the same nonsense over and over again? Let's just look at the facts. I gave you the facts, right? You see Bernie stands on on the issues. You see, right? Now, again, he's 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 reluctant to say that Russia was really not the cause of his being his election being stolen from him, right? He keeps calling Trump a racist wrongly, right? So, he's got some obstacles to overcome. Right. Is he a powerful leader? That's a good that's a good question right there. Bernie's not a leader. Bernie's a is a hippie. Uh, maybe we don't need a why do we do we need an author, authoritarian Trump to muscle his way through Congress? Rather, what happened to inspiration? What happened to inspiring, you know, the electorate, inspiring the people? Let the people be the power. Let the peop the voice of the people uh you know, steer our great nation, right? Why do we need one brute, you know? I mean, Trump was right for the times. Also, one-term presidents, I like that. I'm a fan of one-term presidents. Let Trump fucking, okay, look, you, you turned out to be impotent. You thought you were going to, you were just like Obama, egomaniac. You came in there, you thought you were going to change everything. The deep state is going to bow to your feet. And what happened? You wound up hiring them as your as your cabinet, right? No wall, no no locker up, no nothing, man. You, you didn't do anything, really. You made some strides with North Korea. You did some good things, but the economy is still a shithole. The, 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 the income and wealth inequality is, is, is uh, bigger than ever, so step aside now. Let somebody else get in there, right? And if Sanders, okay, he's too old, right? Well, Trump, Trump 74. Sam, let's talk about that. Sanders 79, uh, getting in office at 79. It's up there. In age, but even if he even if he muscled through one term, that's fine. 83, 83 years old, bow out, pass the to torch to his vice president. Who, uh, I mean, I'll make a prediction. I think it'll be Tulsi Gabbard or uh, hopefully not Elizabeth Warren. I don't think I think that's a bad move. But he's also he's he's already alluded to a, a, a younger woman. You know, that's that's the way Sanders is, right? Not qualifications, but that younger woman happens to be very qualified, right? So you got, that would be a good one-two punch, you know? Tulsi Gabbard, Bernie Sanders. The other way around, Sanders Gabbard. 
so um you know so that's my uh that's my spin on that and um you know if you if you decide to uh to to leave this channel i wish you well man i wish you i wish you well in your pursuit of truth and justice and clarity and um i hope that i was some i was part of um that clarity as a uh not a trump apologist but certainly someone who gave trump space but you know now it's like i have to follow the truth and this is where the truth leads me and if it doesn't if that's not your truth then i i i respect your your pursuit of truth marcus conti reporting